Welcome home to Radiant Life Church, where everyone counts. We're so glad you're joining us for this online service. This week, we celebrated our 24th anniversary. Yes, we did. It has been such an exciting journey, and I really believe that the best is yet to come. Mm -hmm. But right now, I'm excited about the road ahead as we take the road to Easter. And I believe that God has some great things in store. We're really seeing the Spirit move in our church family, both here on campus and online. And I'm praying that God will do something great in your life and the lives of those you love. And so as we come up toward Easter Sunday, on Good Friday, we are going to have a 6.30 p.m. service right here on our campus where we will come together and really commemorate the price that Jesus paid yes. for us when he laid down his life on the cross. And then it is going to be a big celebration. There will be Easter eggs for the kids, mm -hmm. a wonderful time of worship as we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior right at the end of the month. What a great time to be part of the family of God. Amen. You know, it is such an exciting season, and I love this time of year. I want to share a verse from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 24. It says, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. You know, each day we're given the opportunity to tell the Lord how much we love him, how good he is, but we also get to share that with others. So I wanna encourage you to share God's goodness with someone you know. Oh, that is such a good word. The Lord has been good Amen. to us. You know, we call the gospel the good news mm -hmm. for a reason because what Jesus does for us is so, so good. And when we focus on the goodness mm -hmm. of God, there's just something that that spreads like like wildfire. Yes. And it's amazing how the power and the presence of the Lord can work in each of our lives. Let's take a moment and pray together, shall mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the fact that you have been good to us and you've given us your one and only son, our good, good savior. And I pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit will move in our hearts and give us the courage and the compassion to share your love, your grace, in your goodness with those around us as we journey forward on the road to Easter. Yes, and Lord, I lift up our church family. God, I just pray your blessing over each one. Father, I pray that you would draw them close to you as they continue to walk out their faith. Lord, may they just know that you are with them each step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's take a few minutes and worship together. the word at the beginning one with God the Lord most high your hidden glory in creation and now revealed in you are Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. didn't want heaven without us so Jesus you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater so I can separate us now what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of You have no rival 
what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. And there is good news for the doubter, the one religion failed, for the good Lord has come to seek and save. If given the choice to spend time anywhere on earth, Pastor Anianci would generally choose the beach. And while I love going to the beach with her and the rest of our family, I tend to gravitate toward the mountains. Yosemite National Park is one of my favorite places on earth. I love the mountains, waterfalls, and enormous trees. Giant sequoias have always held a special place in my heart. I've spent many hours sitting at the roots of a giant sequoia with the Word of God in my hands as I've prayed and drawn near to the Lord. The Skit Guys recently visited some of the ancient giants here in Northern California and offer some perspective on being rooted in Christ as we travel the road to Easter. This tree is over 300 feet tall, estimated to be at least 600 years old. And that's nothing. There are trees towering over this forest that were just seedlings when Christ was walking on the earth. How deep do you think the roots are on a tree like this? 100 feet? 1,000 feet? The truth is, a tree this tall can't grow roots deep enough to support itself. That is why redwoods have intertwining roots. They support one another. These trees literally do for each other what they can't do alone. I think Jesus demonstrated that same mindset for us, that we're all in this together, supporting one another. I mean, think about it. He never just passed somebody by leaving them stuck. Jesus was constantly intertwining his life with those he came in contact with. He called people out of obscurity to join him in his journey of changing the world. He healed a blind man with mud. He restored a chronically ill outcast with merely the hem of his garment. He renewed one woman's hope for second chances and, and reminded a Pharisee of his need for mercy instead of morality. Jesus' ministry was constantly intertwined with people, connecting with them on the most intimate levels and changing their lives forever. Jesus called his followers to love people the way that he loved them, to bring health to the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, touch the untouchables, and as you have been treated generously, so live generously. And that call hasn't expired. Yeah, his charge to the church is just as clear today as ever. Therefore, may we be rooted in Christ, intertwined with one another, so that we may continue his mission. On March 4th, my wife and I celebrated 24 years of marriage, and we sat next to each other in one of her favorite places, a salon, where we received pedicures side by side. Now, before you judge me, it was my first time ever receiving a pedicure. We discussed several options, and I agreed to do something that my wife loves, just as she recently began riding a motorcycle with me. Frankly, I'm secure enough in my masculinity that I can talk about motorcycles and pedicures in the same message. You see, sharing each other's passions has helped us stay connected for nearly a quarter of a century. When my wife slips into a helmet and saddles up on the pillion seat behind me, it sends the same kind of message as when I take off my shoes and roll my jeans up to the knees in a salon. We're in this together. I've got your back. I'll be right beside you. I'm rooting for you. When you love somebody, you'll step out of your comfort zone for them, root for them, and learn to speak their love language. As we travel along the road to Easter together, we're reminded that the cross is the ultimate expression of God's love for us. The Bible is God's love letter to us. 
But certain details are sometimes lost in translation. Like when the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write to the church at Ephesus, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Obviously, the act of kneeling is both an act of submission to the Lord and a posture taken when we approach the Lord in prayer. But the part about every family deriving its name is easy to miss without an understanding of the relationship between the Greek words for father and family. You see, the Greek word that is translated as father in Ephesians 3.14 is the root of the word that's translated as family in Ephesians 3.15. So the word family is literally derived from the word father in Greek. There's an element of the father in every family. This is one reason that we refer to the church as a family. Our heavenly father is rooting for every one of us to grow closer to the Lord and become more like Jesus every day. That's why we say everyone counts as a church family. It's as if we're rooting for each other as we share life's journey through growing relationship with Jesus Christ. I pray that those who have not yet received Jesus as Savior and Lord will see that the church is on their side because Jesus is on their side. The message to our friends, families, neighbors, co-workers, classmates, and critics should be that we're rooting for you because our Heavenly Father is rooting for you. And what are we rooting for? spiritual awakening, supportive relationships, and the fullness of God. That's what the road to Easter is all about. So let's turn to Ephesians 3, beginning at verse 14, where we read, For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of His glorious riches He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Would you bow your head with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking directly to our hearts through your word today. I pray in the name of Jesus that as we draw near to you, we would each hear you say, I'm rooting for you, and that we would strive to be more like Jesus every day as we share the road to Easter and shine the light of Jesus in this generation. I pray that many would come to faith in Jesus and experience new life during this season of resurrection. We pray these things in Christ Jesus' name, amen. About 81% of Americans plan to celebrate Easter and 43% plan to attend church on Easter Sunday according to the personal finance website wallethub.com. This is staggering in light of the fact that only 7.5% of the U.S. population is in church on any given Sunday, according to research from Professor Devin Pope of the University of Chicago. This is the perfect time for a spiritual awakening. In Ephesians 3, 16 and 17, we read, I pray that out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That's the kind of language that says, I'm rooting for you. This isn't about religious rituals. It's about being rooted in Jesus Christ, thriving in the power of the Holy Spirit, and being nourished by the Word of God. This should be our prayer for each other and for every person who needs to experience the kind of transformation that only Jesus brings, a spiritual awakening. God requires little of us but offers so much to us because of His great love for us. As we travel the road to Easter, let's be sure to remember that the good news is rooted in God's love. In John 3.16 we read, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. There are a lot of reasons that John 3.16 is so popular. These are words of life. This one verse expresses the widespread love of God, the priceless gift of Jesus, the purpose of our faith, 
the promise of redemption and the confident hope of eternal life. For many, John 3.16 is like a key that unlocks a spiritual awakening. King David is called a man after God's own heart, despite some pretty significant sin in his life. But King David returned to the Lord again and again, repented of his sin, received forgiveness, and wrote about the love of God in the Psalms. In Psalm 103, 8 through 12, we read, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. If you've remained faithful to the Lord, the Lord's rooting for you. If you've stumbled or strayed, the Lord is rooting for you. If you need hope today, the Lord is rooting for you. And he's not just cheering from the sidelines. The Lord is reaching out to you, walking with you, and able to carry you. The road to Easter leads each of us straight to Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Though our lives are filled with many twists, turns, dips, and bumps, we are not on the road alone. At Radiant Life Church, our mission is to share life's journey through growing relationship with Jesus Christ. We live in an era in which the average person can communicate with more people in a day through social media than some people have met in an entire year. As followers of Jesus, we recognize that God has called us to build supportive relationships through the things we say, do, and post. In the latter part of Ephesians 3, 17 through verse 18, we read, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. These verses are directed toward the church, but the principle can be applied toward those outside the church as well. Prayer is our ultimate avenue of rooting for others. I pray that those who know Jesus will always be rooted and established in love. And I pray that those who do not know Jesus will become rooted and established in love. It should be our prayer that everyone will become connected as the Lord's holy people by developing, nurturing, and maintaining supportive relationships, through which we grasp the enormity of the love of Christ. One of the best descriptions of the width, length, height, and depth of the Lord's love is found in 1 Corinthians 13, beginning at verse 4, where we read, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. We have this description of love on the wall in our master bathroom. I see it every day. And every day, I am challenged to love like that. Many days, I feel like the rapper Holvey and want to keep repeating, I can't love like that. But then I remember how Jesus loves me. And I can almost hear Jesus saying, I'm rooting for you. He's rooting for you to love like that too. The only way any of us can hope to love others as unselfishly as the Bible describes, especially those who are difficult to love, is to be completely saturated in the love of God. We need to do more than just study about God, sing about God, and talk about God. We need to be filled with the fullness of God in every part of our lives. In Ephesians 3.19, we read, And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I need to live every moment in the fullness of God. And that's how I'm rooting for you as well, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. We've got to pray that way for our sons, daughters, mothers, fathers, spouses, neighbors, co-workers, classmates, friends, relatives, acquaintances, and even people we've never met. 
Imagine if our roots were so intertwined with Jesus that we were able to look at each other in the eye and say, I'm rooting for you. Those simple words make it clear that I want the best for you, whether you're a banker or a bartender. I care about you, whether you're an athlete or an addict. I believe God has a plan and purpose for your life, whether you're a student or a soldier. I'm rooting for you to experience the fullness of God. In John 10, 9 and 10, Jesus said, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. As we invite others to join us on the road to Easter, we need to remember that Jesus is our only hope. Jesus is the only gate. There's no back door into heaven. The gate is narrow, so our reach must be wide today. The gate is narrow, so our reach must be wide enough to extend God's love to those who are not yet following Jesus. The gate is narrow. So our reach must be wide enough to embrace those who are stumbling along the way. The skit guys say, the roots of Jesus' sacrifice reach as far as the circumference of the world and as deep as any ocean. Whether you are following Jesus with all your heart or still trying to figure out how Jesus could possibly fit into your life, I'm rooting for you. In Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, we read, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever, amen. Nothing is impossible for Jesus. No one is beyond his reach. He gave his life so that everyone can be forgiven and set free from sin and shame. There is no limit to what Jesus can do in our lives as we draw close to him and are filled with the Holy Spirit. His power works in us and through us to unite the church and shine the light of Jesus in this generation. We're on the road to Easter together, and I'm rooting for you to be part of a spiritual awakening as we lock arms in supportive relationships and encourage one another to live in the fullness of God. And I pray that together, We'll send the message to this community that we're rooting for you in the name of Jesus. If you've never made the decision to follow Jesus, then today would be a great day to become rooted in Jesus and begin to follow Him as Savior and Lord of your life. I like to say that choosing to follow Jesus is as easy as ABC. The letter A stands for admit that you've sinned and ask God to forgive your sin. The letter B stands for believe that Jesus Christ paid the price for your sin when he died on the cross and that he conquered death when he rose from the grave. And the letter C stands for choose. And that's exactly what I wanna encourage you to do right now, to choose to follow Jesus today. If you're ready to make that choice and take that first step in the right direction, then please bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat this simple prayer with me. You can make it your own if you mean it. Dear Jesus, I know that you are good and I want you to be the Lord of my life. So I admit that I have sinned and I ask you, forgive my sin because I believe that you paid the price for my sin when you died on the cross and you conquered death when you rose from the grave. And so I choose to follow you today and tomorrow and each day throughout my life's journey. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life, for taking away my sin, and for making me a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed with me, please send an email to prayer at rlclodi.com. At Radiant Life Church, our mission is to share life's journey through growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Who are you rooting for today? I wanna encourage you to make it your goal to tell someone that you're rooting for them this week 
and invite them to join us on the road to Easter. The best is yet to come. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You give light. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. Restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord, because it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. And great are you, Lord. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the dark. I 
I see the stars And I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout The universe displays Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! If you've been blessed by our online services and would like to support the ministries and missions efforts of Radiant Life Church, you can visit our website at radiantlifelodi.com and click the donate link at the top of the homepage. Thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord through your generosity. Come and be changed. Come and be changed.